You are about to embark upon the great crusade. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. Welcome back to the Army Flashcards Ranger School podcast. I'm your host, Zach Wiley. Today's episode is Chapter 13, Mounted Patrol Operations. As always, before we begin, if you get a chance, check out armyflashcards.com for tons of free resources. And let us begin. Chapter 13, Mounted Patrol Operations. This chapter outlines a technique for conducting vehicle mounted patrol operations. Mounted patrol operations present a challenge to the ranger leader. Trucks and other combat vehicles produce a large signature on the battlefield and increase the unit's value as a target. Vehicle movement is restricted to roads and terrain that can be traversed. Refer to ATP 4-01.45 and ATP 3-21.8 for more information. Planning 13-1 When conducting a mounted patrol as part of the operation, it is important to incorporate the mounted patrol as a leader uses the eight steps of the troop leading procedures. The following information should be included when conducting a mission analysis using METTC. Mission. The PL extracts the following information from the company op board. Vehicle support, number and type of vehicles, and the allowable combat load. Weather. Road conditions. Vehicle pickup and drop off location and markings. Vehicle movement timeline, pickup time, movement time, and other information. Vehicle routes, primary and alternate checkpoints. Enemy. Known or suspected enemy locations in the AO or along planned routes. Potential locations for enemy ambush or improvised explosive device, IED, emplacement. Recent enemy activities or reactions to mounted patrol operations. Terrain. Identify potential pickup and drop off locations. Evaluate routes and pickup and drop off locations using OACOKE. Consider weather and road conditions. Troops. Number of passengers for each vehicle. Chalks and chalk leaders identified. Tactical crossload, link up and marking teams identified, pick up and drop off security plan. Time, backwards planning sequence, ground tactical plan, unload plan, ground movement plan, loading plan, staging plan. Civilians, rules of engagement, actions with civilians during movement, ROE, actions with civilian vehicles during movement. Note, allocate time for movement, reconnaissance, and establishment of security. 13-2, there are five phases of a mounted patrol. Each phase supports the ground tactical plan, which specifies actions in the objective area to accomplish the commander's intent for the assigned mission, whether it is a raid, ambush, reconnaissance, or other follow-on missions. 13-3. The five phases are the staging plan, loading plan, ground movement plan, unloading plan, and ground tactical plan. This involves staging plan, establish security, employ markings and recognition signals for day and night, link up, Conduct final friendly unit coordination, disseminate information and any changes to subordinate leaders. Loading plan. Task organization and tactical crossloading. Each ranger is assigned to a vehicle, ensuring tactical crossload of weapon systems and key personnel. Vehicle number, key leader, key weapon systems, additional personnel and communications. Location of PL, location of platoon sergeant and medic, location of weasel, location of communication, FO, RTO, or both. Ground Movement Plan. Troops awake and alert, pulling active security during movement. Platoon leader and vehicle commanders tracking route progress. Compromise and Contingency Plan. React to IED. React to ambush. Vehicle breakdown. Unloading Plan. Dismount vehicles according to SOP and the reverse load plan. Establish security. Platoon sergeant accounts for personnel and clears all vehicles for departure. Establish security at the halt or perimeter. Adjust perimeter as vehicles depart area. Ground Tactical Plan. Prepare to continue movement, conduct follow-on mission. 13-4. The warning order brings together the vehicle movement. It contains basic information on the situation, mission, task organization, any special instructions, initial time organization, and the uniform and equipment common to all. See Table 13-1 on pages 13-3 through 13-5. Table 13-1, Mounted Tactical Movement Brief. This table has a shell for a tactical movement brief. However, I will not be reading it. Potential Situations 13-5 Whenever there is a mounted patrol, especially in hostile environments, 
There's a possibility of an ambush, forced stop, or other potentially hazardous situation. Rangers are well trained in maneuvers to protect themselves and their fellow soldiers in these circumstances. Figure 13-1 on page 13-6 and figure 13-2 on page 13-7 detail various methods used in mounted patrols. Figure 13-1 react to ambush near. Enemy initiates weapons fire RPG IED. Step 1. Lead element of convoy reacts to contact and immediately returns fire. Step 2. Fire team dismounts under close support from gun trucks. Step 3. Trail fire team and trail gun truck move to block most likely escape route. Figure 13-2, react to ambush far. Enemy is outside 100 meters and initiates RPG IED. Step 1. Lead gun truck and lead fire team establish support by fire. Step 2. Trail element flanks. Squad leader PL adjusts IDF into enemy escape route. Step 3. Lead element shifts fire. Indirect fire cease loading. Trail element assaults across. Forced stops 13-6. When vehicles are forced to stop due to weapons fire, RPGs, IEDs, or indirect fire, activate the turn signal to indicate the direction of contact. If the vehicles are not in direct contact, report using internal communication, the identity of the vehicle, type of contact, clock direction, and grid coordinates if available. 13-7. Personnel on vehicles that are forced to stop dismount on the non-contact side, assume covered positions, and provide initial base of fire. The entire patrol halts, personnel dismount on the non-combat side, and provide additional fire. Vehicles not in contact reposition and provide supporting fire. Method 1. 13-8. The PL assesses the situation and maneuver in order to suppress the enemy and gain fire superiority. Once the PL determines the threat is eliminated, recovery and CASVAC operations can begin. 13-9. If the PL determines the patrol cannot gain fire superiority to eliminate the threat, the patrol executes break contact procedures. Figure 13-3 details method 1 to use when mounted patrols are forced to stop. Method 2. 13-10. When vehicles are forced to stop due to weapons fire, RPGs, IDs, or in direct fire, activate the turn signal to indicate the direction of attack. All personnel stay in the vehicles. 13-11. Drive the vehicles out of the kill zone. The vehicles directly behind disabled vehicles push the disabled vehicles out of the kill zone. The vehicles not disabled establish a pace of fire towards the suspected or known enemy. 13-12. If fire superiority can be gained, the PL uses the minimum amount of force necessary to destroy the enemy. If the PL determines the patrol cannot gain fire superiority, the leader breaks contact. Figure 13-4 details method 2 to use when mounted patrols are forced to stop. Break contact, 13-13. Always try to close with the enemy first so they cannot come back later to attack the patrol. If the PL determines the patrol cannot gain fire superiority and decides to break contact, the PL determines a rally point to the front or rear or both. Communications and pyrotechnic signals are used to break contact and occupy the rally points. The patrol deploys obscuration measures if available. 13-14. Using cover and concealment, the aid and litter teams evacuate all casualties under fire. The patrol maintains position and fire suppression in the contact zone and assists the aid and litter teams as necessary. 13-15. Disabled vehicles are towed or destroyed as directed by the leaders. Vehicles displace forward or backward under the control of leaders. The most forward vehicle in the contact zone moves first, followed by the next most forward vehicle. Vehicles continue to displace under supporting fires until contact is broken. 13-16 If break contact occurs with vehicles on both sides of the contact zone, displacement of vehicles occurs using an alternating technique. Upon occupation of the ORP, leaders immediately position vehicles to establish 360-degree security, consolidate, and reorganize. Figure 13-5 details how to break contact. Kazovac and recovery operations. 13-17 once the leader assesses the enemy threat is destroyed, neutralized, defeated, and the area is secure, Kazvac and recovery operations begin. This helps keep soldiers focused on defeating and destroying the threat. 13-18 During Kazvac operations, the aid and litter teams position themselves on the safe side, extracting casualties and personnel. Casualties are treated after they are safely removed from the contact area. 13-19 during vehicle recovery procedures, the recovery team position themselves on the safe side of the disabled vehicle. The truck commander dismounts and assesses the disabled vehicle. If the TC determines the vehicle can be safely recovered, the TC guides the recovery vehicle into position and conducts a hasty hookup. If necessary, the TC can operate the disabled vehicle. 13-20 Upon exiting the contact area, complete and correct hookup procedures occur. 
If it is assessed that outside support is necessary for recovery, the leader contacts higher headquarters for guidance. Disabled vehicles may be abandoned or destroyed by leaders. Once recovery operations are complete, the team displaces and conducts link up at the rally point. Figure 13-6 details Kazvac and recovery operations. End chapter 13. All right, that's it for chapter 13. That was really short, but definitely some good stuff in there. I'm sorry I didn't read table 13-1, which is the mounted tactical movement brief. Really, uh, I just didn't see any point in it. And if you need the shell, you should just pull up that page in chapter 13 and then fill it in. And with the conclusion of this chapter, we only have two more to go. That's right, only two more episodes and we will be complete with the Ranger Handbook. I may do a few more episodes to wrap up the annexes, go back and uh, read through the op order shells and stuff, but we're almost there, so thanks for going through this with me. And before we end, as always, check out armyflashcards.com, and I will see you next time.